Hey everybody, Home Slice Hunter here, and in today's video, I'm going to be trying out my newly acquired Shadow Dragonite for the first time in the Open Master League. I've been searching for a Shadow Dragonite that had Master League IVs for quite some time, and during this most recent Rocket event, I finally got one. It's 15 attack, 14 defense, 14 HP, and to me, that was definitely good enough to build. I ran a pretty anti-meta team with Nihiligo lead and Aveltal as the closer, with Shadow Dragonite with Hurricane as the save switch, and went 10 and 5 in those battles. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and take a look at Shadow Hurricane Dragonite in the Open Master League. Hopping into the first match, we've got a bit of an interesting pick here from the opponent as they're leading Gyarados into Nihiligo. Gyarados is a Pokemon that is picking up a little bit in popularity due to the fact that it does have a very positive matchup against Rhyperior. Nihiligo is going to fire off the Rock Slide. The Rock Slide choice is an intentional one. Here my opponent banks a ton of energy and they're going to send in a Shiny Zacian. However, Shiny Zacian normally would be a wall to energy, but not today. In comes the Hurricane. Massive damage, nearly one hit KOing the Zacian. And now I can shield up the play rough, double resisted Dragon Breath all the way down, and just leave with a ton of energy to threaten whatever my opponent decides to send in. A lot of people really didn't end up respecting the Hurricane. They would farm up a ton of energy, expecting that the Fairy type would wall it, and then they would have a pretty bad day once the Hurricane landed. Here, my opponent loses count of the energy on the Dragonite, so I'm able to make another Dragon Claw. Down goes the Gyarados. In the back is Tapu Bulu, and look at those Poison Jabs go. Opponent knows they're cooked. They're not even going to throw a move, and we're able to take the win. Moving to the next match, and I'm leading Nihiligo into the other dog Pokemon, and that is Zamazenta. Zamazenta, typically running some combination of Crunch, Close Combat, and occasionally Moonblast. I'm expecting they're going to go for the Close Combat here after one more Snarl. So, I'm going to grab the Shield, throw one, switch, and catch a potential Close Combat onto the Shadow Dragonite. Shadow Dragonite catches a Crunch instead. Opponent now going to bring out Zacian. So, again, we're able to lure out the Fairy-type. They over-farm because they're like, okay, surely I'm going to be walling this. Dragon Claw, Super Power, neither one's a problem, but that Hurricane Damage, massive massive onto that Zacian. Zacian goes for the play rough, but Dragonite did its job. This Zacian is now in perfect farm range for Nihiligo. Nihiligo's up a shield. I have a bunch of energy stored as well, so things are looking really good now. I continue to farm. I'm going to be firing off this Sludge Bomb at the Zamazenta. Zamazenta has to shield or they will get knocked out. I'm going to switch into a Veltal in the back. My opponent actually has their own Nihiligo. A very, very cool pick. Speaking of Nihiligo, the reason why I'm on Rock Slide, even though it was nerfed instead of Power Gem, is specifically because of the Aveltal matchup. In the Aveltal matchup, if you're running Power Gem, then Aveltal can actually win the twos, just purely off of pacing. Whereas with Rock Slide, Aveltal is going to be losing all evens. Rock Slide is going to be shielded up. I'm going to get a nice farm down with my Aveltal. I go for Oblivion Wing. Opponent forced to throw their energy instantly here to deny the game winning move. But after they close combat, I can just bring in Nihiligo. I'm in no danger of a close combat knocking me out, so I can safely make it to a Sludge Bomb. Sludge Bomb KOs Amazenta, and we're able to take the win. Up into the next match, Nihiligo versus Dawnwings, a terrible lead. I'm going to be safe switching out into the Dragonite. Dragonite farming up quite a bit of energy. I could have thrown the Dragon Claw, but I wanted to preserve energy in case they decided to send in a Fairy. Dark Pulse is going to land. They're going to bring in their own Dragonite. I will go for the Dragon Claw. This will do a lot, but my opponent can no-shield this, and they do. But that Shadow Dragon Claw, that's one thing that I loved about the Shadow Dragonite. The damage output is just so much better than the regular Dragonite. And in addition, the Shadow Dragonite performs a lot better against Pokemon like Palkia. So, I do get the farm down. This energy will be nice as I will get to fire off some rock slides at Dawnwings, but that's not going to be the Dawnwings. Instead, it's Dialga entering the field. So, my opponent is incredibly, incredibly strong to Nihiligo. And that's the tough thing about Nihiligo. Sometimes you're going to encounter teams that are just like double or even triple weak to it, and other games, it just has no play whatsoever. Here, my opponent is going to go for the Iron Head. I'm going to keep farming, go for another Dark Pulse. And this is going to be a very difficult game to win. At some point, I'm going to have to bait back out the Dawn Wings. Because, of course, Dawn Wings Shadow Claw is going to do a lot less damage than Dragon Breath from Dialga. So I will commit the shield. My clock's up. So I bring in Nihiligo. Opponent is going to bring back in the Dawn Wings. And I'm going to fire off the Rock Slide. Rock Slide is going to connect. Getting Dawn Wings low. Dawn Wings farming up. And perfect energy awareness from my opponent as they're going to deny my energy with the CMP tie. Dark Pulse is going to KO. Aveltal gets the farm. 
farmed out. I leave with the move on one HP and the dragon breath does not go through. Dark Pulse KOs Dialga and we're able to clutch an improbable win. We got the dream lead in the next match. Nihiligo into Florges. Opponent safe switches into Ursaluna. And I'll be honest, I don't really have a good counter swap to an Ursaluna safe switch. When I saw the typing, I just saw ground and assumed it was Rhyperior. And if it's Rhyperior, Shadow Dragonite is the matchup that I want to be in. A Shadow Dragonite is able to pretty severely outpace Rhyperior as they need to land a rock record to deal any meaningful damage. But Ursaluna, I'm just triple weak to Ursaluna. So this is actually a pretty big problem. I will commit the shield, but since I'm down energy and we pace basically identically, I'm just going to lose Switch here due to that energy advantage that my opponent has. So they're going to get to the Swift. Swift is actually going to be able to knock out, and this is a bit uncomfortable because at this point, I'm fully expecting it's Rhyperior in the back. And if it's Rhyperior in the back, then I just can't win the game. My opponent is going to bring in Florges. I bring in Nihiligo, and in the back is Kyogre. And this is just a loss, unfortunately. I don't have a way to win this game. I will go for the Sludge Bomb, but my opponent can just knock me out with a Surf, and they're in a pretty good spot, but my opponent doesn't know Nihiligo counts. They overfarm too much. I actually get a Rock Slide. It KOs. Back in comes the Florges. Florges can knock out with a Moonblast here, and then I'm going to need to try and win with my Yavelto, but they get greedy and they go for the Disarming Voice. This is a game that rightfully I should have lost, but my opponent ended up misplaying there, and I'm able to sneak away with a victory. All right, tough lead. Leading Nihiligo into Shadow Rhyperior. I'm going to save switch into Shadow Dragonite, and my opponent is going to respond with Florges. Florges is a lot worse of a matchup to get counter switch into the Dragonite than something like a Zacian or a Xerneas, because Florges has incredibly good pacing. Like, Fairy Wind to Disarming Voice is very, very fast, and it's bulky enough that it can actually survive. Hurricane can KO a lot of things, but unfortunately, it does not do very good there. There, I don't get a sneak, and that's intentionally so. I want to make sure that my switch clock is up, so that way, I'm not stuck going up against the Rhyperior. I'm going to bring in a Veltal. Rhyperior is going to be firing off its energy, and I will commit the shield, as this is going to be enough for a Rock Wrecker. They're going to go for a Breaking Swipe, and in the back is Gyarados. And unfortunately for me... This game just does not appear to be a winning one. If I was able to flip switch in the mid game, then I'd be in a terrific spot as Aveltal and the two shield does great against Rhyperior. But unfortunately, without switch advantage, I just get too low. I'm now on a range where Breaking Swipe can KO. I'm still going to play it out. Maybe there's a win con, but I really don't see it. Here, I intentionally don't throw because by them having to throw an Aqua Tail before switching to burn their Switch Clock, it means less farm for the Rhyperior, but Rhyperior is still going to exit with a Breaking Swipe, so this game is still absolutely over. Rhyperior is just an absolute nightmare for Nihiligo to deal with, and since they have a shield, there's no point in me throwing my Dark Pulse, so unfortunately, we are going to lose that game. We move to the next match. Oh, great lead. Nihiligo versus Asian Opponent staying in this matchup. Oh my goodness. They've got to be core broken. Again, as I mentioned, there's going to be some games where Nihiligo just tears apart teams. And other where, unfortunately, the Nihiligo feels extremely useless. And this appears to be one of the ones where the opponent is just extremely, extremely weak to it. The Rock Slide on the CMP tie is able to grab a shield. So I'm more than happy to shield back and farm all the way down. Opponent switches into Ho-Oh. And I actually blind switched into the Dragonite before seeing what they switched into. If I saw that they were bringing in Ho, I would have just stayed in with the Nihiligo. But this is still going to work out. They have to Brave Bird here if they want to KO. And if they do, I can just farm down with Nihiligo or a Veltal. They actually end up going for a Sacred Fire instead. And the Sacred Fire means that I can actually Dragon Breath all the way down. Again, the shadow damage on the Dragonite. Is so nice. I bring in a Veltal. It's Tapu Bulu in the back. And they're just triple weak to Nihiligo. Oh my goodness. Nihiligo goes for the Rock Slide. They need a double up. And it's just never going to happen. They're staying in the match. So we're going to leave that Zacian with a little parting gift of a Sludge Bomb. Fully charged. Knocking out the Zacian. And taking the win. We move to the next match, Nihiligo versus a Shiny Dragonite. And I've got to say, after seeing the Shinies of the Dratini and the Dragonair, the Shiny for Dragonite honestly just does nothing for me. I wish that I liked it better, but I just really do not vibe with it personally. Here, my opponent is going to stay in. That's great for me. The thing is, I will have to pivot out eventually because I will have to check and see if they have a Fairy-type in the back. So, 
After forcing a shield, I can bring in my own Dragonite, shield once, and farm all the way down if they stay in. They're highly likely to switch out, and they do. In comes Shadow Mewtwo. Shadow Mewtwo, gonna take monster damage here from this Dragon Breath, Dragon Claw combination. Opponent is gonna shield, and perfect over farm there by my opponent. I really do not want to deal with energy from this Mewtwo because if I bring in a Veltal, they could have made an Ice Beam and I really didn't want to have to play that guessing game. So instead, I'd rather just keep the Dragonite healthy. My opponent now going to bring in Excadrill as their final Pokemon and it's actually on Mudshot. Very interesting. There, I just decided to farm up a ton of energy to force their hand in throwing their energy because obviously a Dragon Claw is not going to do a lot. And look at these sucker punches go. With the only cups available being the, the little Halloween cup and Masters, you're going to see a lot more free-to-play teams in the meta just because people are running what they have because they don't want to invest a million and a half Stardust into a one-week cup by building a Shuckle for no reason whatsoever. So you are going to see a lot more free-to-play teams overall, but they come back in with the Dragonite. Nihiligo makes the Rock Slide, and we're able to take the win. Up into the next match, Nihiligo versus Rhyperior. We lost one of these earlier. I save switch to the Shadow Dragonite. Out comes Charm Primarina. Primarina looking for the full charm down, but I make it to the Hurricane. Do they respect the damage? They do not. They get KO'd, and that's how we do it. Switch flip with the Shadow Dragonite, and you already know if they had a Charm Primarina back there, they're going to have a Togekiss as their third. We're double weak to Charm. They're double charm, but they have to quit because Shadow Dragonite flipped switch and won the game. Terrible lead in the next match, leading into a Kyogre with Nihiligo. I save switch into Dragonite. Opponent banks a ton of energy and brings out Xerneas. Amazing for me because now I get to fire off the Hurricane. Hurricane is gonna land, just dealing massive damage to the Xerneas. And I'm more than happy to shield, farm all the way down. And this way, I get to leave with so much energy to threaten whatever my opponent decides to send in. They send in Dialga. And this, unfortunately, is probably going to be a lost game for me as, again, this is one of those games where the Nihiligo just can't really do much of anything. My opponent has a lot of energy. I think my only win con is to try and call an Iron Head here. My opponent is actually running Thunder on Dialga. I can't win that, so I will concede the match. Great lead, Nihiligo versus Zacian. Opponent save switches into Zygarde, and I get to respond with Aveltal. Aveltal does technically have a losing matchup versus Zygarde, but the good news is, is you resist their charge moves. Crunch is going to be single resisted, and of course, Earthquake is going to be double resisted. So unless they're running Outrage, you're just a complete wall to their energy. It's still a very close matchup, however, just because Zygarde has a completely broken stat product in the Master League. So they're going to fire off a Crunch. Thankfully, their Crunch is are not debuffing today. That is very, very helpful for the Aveltal. Aveltal is going to go for the Oblivion Wing. They're very close to another crunch, but I just get the Sucker Punch down. In comes Zacian. Zacian's going to take significant damage from Oblivion Wing. Like, the coverage on Aveltal is just absolutely insane. To me, it's one of the most flexible Pokemon you can run in the Master League. I bring in Nihiligo. In the back, it's Palkia, and this game's over. If they shield the Rock Slide, I can just win with Dragonite. If they no shield, then I can just win with Dragonite. So either way, no matter what they did, they were just in a losing position, so they will resign the match. We've got trouble on our hands in the next match, and its name is Genesect. Genesect, of course, lightning fast with the Ice-type Technoblast, since this is the Chill Drive Genesect. I respect it, and I get baited with a Magnet Bomb. And the threat of a Magnet Bomb is why it didn't stay in with Nihiligo. If they don't have Magnet Bomb, Nihiligo actually has a positive matchup there. But since they have it, and honestly, I like to run x Scissor, but most people that I see run Magnet Bomb, so I do end up switching out. Opponent switches into Gyarados, but they switched very, very late. And them switching as late as they did is actually pretty good for me because I'm now in a position where if I want to, I can send in Nihiligo into the Gyarados. I do want to bank an Oblivion Wing for later because Adulto does have a pretty decent attack stat. I'm looking for the farm down, but the Gyarados survives on one HP to make a last second Aqua Tail. Now I have an energy advantage, so if they bring in the Genesect, I can make a Rock Slide and KO. So instead, they're going to bring in Giratina Origin. Rock Slide 
Honestly, does pretty pathetic damage in this matchup post nerf, but here my opponent does not know that I actually win CMP in this matchup. The thing about Nihiligo is it has a massive stat product. I mean, not by Zygarde standards, but by most things in the Master League standards, it has a very big stat product. Opponent sends in Genesect at the last second, but this game's over. I banked the move on a Veltal. So they shield the Dragon Claw. I combo with the Oblivion Wing, and there's just no longer any way for my opponent to win this game, as Genesect will get KO'd. In comes the Giratina. That gets Sucker Punch down, and I'm able to take the win. Hopping into the final match, leading Nihiligo into Palkia. I throw one Poison Jab, Safe Switch into Shadow Dragonite. They stay, they try and catch a Dragon Claw onto Zacian. And man, people love just giving Shadow Dragonite way too much energy. So let's punish him for it. Let's land that Hurricane, deal massive, massive damage. And now, honestly, I don't feel like I can shield. If they have Wild Charge, which they do, they'd get two. So I don't really want to go down two shields, considering Palkia is a very scary Pokemon for my team to see. My Switch of Clock will be available very soon, and now it's up. In the back is going to be Dusk Main. Their Switch Clock not up quite yet. They're going to bring back in the Palkia, and Palkia will fire off its energy. I decided to let it through. It is just going to be the Aqua Tail, and since an Aqua Tail was no shielded, I should just have this game won because I can force the shield from my opponent, I can shield back, I can sucker punch all the way down, and if you've ever been a Dusk main, you know trying to Shadow Claw down a Veltal is basically impossible due to how severely a Veltal is going to dominate that matchup. Opponent sees the writing on the wall and concedes the match. All in all, I had a ton of fun with this team. I initially started off running it with a Veltal save switch and with the Shadow Dragon it with Superpower as the closer. And that honestly didn't feel like it had great synergy, but I wanted to try it out with the Shadow Hurricane and my goodness, what a difference it made. It was just night and day, the difference between save switching the Dragonite with the Hurricane. Suddenly the team just clicked. As I mentioned at the start, Nihiligo definitely feels like a bit of a hit or miss Pokemon. There's some teams that are just triple weak to it. Like you will run into Ho-Oh Double Fairy and you'll just basically 1v3 with Nihiligo. And there's some games where they have like Rhyperior Dialga Core and your Nihiligo is the most useless Pokemon to ever grace the Master League. So it is a bit feast or famine, but I did have a lot of fun with this team. And this Master League meta with all of the adjustments to it is something that I am trying to get a better handle on. And I do feel like this was a pretty consistently successful team across the sets that I ran with it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The Sport Guys fight is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.